Hello, everybody. My name is Reggie, and I'm the host of the Simply Straight Talk podcast. And today, I want to bring you a subject. I want to talk about suicide. Now, this is following behind the recent suicide of a young lady by the name of Alana Miller, who attended um, Southern University. She was a 19-year-old cheerleader. She wrote a very long and heartfelt note. She posted it on Instagram and she later committed suicide. And me coming from someone who has over 20 plus years in the higher education um, field, uh, I have been a director of public safety and emergency and environmental coordinator slash manager. I have been in charge as working in the university is overseeing the installation of the fire system, maintaining the emergency equipment, fire system and all that stuff. Uh, I just wanted to speak from a different perspective of what I'm hoping that if anyone from a college or university will see, they don't say, oh, well, we know this, but how can we improve this? But I'm hoping that this also reaches many college students that they learn or maybe try to encourage your university to create a real support and training program to help recognize signs of how to help people, what to do when you see posts like that. Also, you know, asking people to be a little more supportive and just, hey, you no, know, listen, encouraging each other, you may want to go talk to this person, you may want to go talk to that person. Having those resources available for students, for faculty and staff. Now, let me go back a little bit more because Alana Miller, was not the only suicide that has taken place. There have actually been several suicides from college students that have taken place uh, just in the past month. Um, so, and I'm pretty sure that there are others, uh, you, but you know how it is with the media, some things get higher profile than others. So, but that being said, let me start with this. Um, parents, when you send your child to college, you should have a good feel for your child as far as their mental health status. Like, has your child thought about suicide before? Do you know that your child has maybe, is, is or has or is currently dealing with depression? You know, have they spoken to you about it? These things, you may want to relate to the counseling department. And I know a lot of people, when they're going to college, they're signing up, they're excited, they're getting into the college of their choice. I think a lot of parents are probably like, even students are like, should I really tell them that I deal with this? Because if I do, it may disqualify me. And that's a that's a valid concern. You know, they may feel like it may disqualify me from going to this college, even though I thought about it. Maybe I'm not going to do it, but it's just something that I'm, I'm having an issue with. And but I want to get my education. And colleges should look at it as like this is I'm not saying that any particular college is doing this. I'm just putting it out there. Let's just keep this whole conversation 100. The thing about it is there, there may be some places that say, ah, oh, I don't know if we can deal with that. Or some higher education places are just not equipped with the staff to properly deal with it. So the thing about it is, for one, parents make sure that your university, whatever school, higher education uh place you're planning on sending your child that they do have adequate um, counseling services now let's be clear I am not talking about academic counseling and I think when people read and really kind of look into these universities a lot of them will say you know whether it's community colleges or whether it's a four-year university they will say, yes, we have counseling services. No, 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 break that down. Do you have academic counseling? If you do, how many academic counselors do you have? Do you have 
they're um, therapy counselors that deal with mental order, uh, mental order, mental distress disorders, uh, you know, depression, do you anxiety disorders? Do you have counselors that specifically are trained to deal with that? Because what some schools will do, they will use academic counselors as a temporary fix to say, yes, they can deal with that, but no, they can't. They can only deal with it on a short term basis, meaning it can be one or two meetings. And now there's this scramble to try to find some outside agency to attach that student to to get the proper help they need. So you need to ask universities and colleges, do you really have licensed, certified uh, therapists or psychologists working on your campus? If so, what is their availability? Are they 24 seven? Are they only eight to five? Do you have like one that, do you have a set that like maybe one or two people that comes in in the daytime, maybe one or two people that comes in in the evening time. And I know a lot of people say, well, that's why we have resident advisors and our student life department. I want to say this, being a licensed certified therapist, is more than someone being a resident advisor, dean of students, or uh, director of student life, or anything like that. Even a vice president of student life. You really need to have a licensed, certified, experienced therapist because they've dealt with these type of issues before. They recognize the real warning signs. They know when to make the call that something needs to be done at a higher level. And these are the things. They understand the medication that these students may be on. So you need to understand that and they can actually help them if their prescriptions run out by knowing the type of medication where they can get it. But the problem is, I think a lot of people, they send their kids to college and they don't really think about that aspect of the university or college setting. Do they have adequate counseling? Next, is your campus safety, public safety, security, campus police, your student life staff, are they properly trained to deal with responding to a active suicide in progress, meaning the person has literally drunk something, physically harmed themselves that is life threatening? Are they trained in dealing with a situation to where someone has maybe made a phone call and says, I'm gonna kill myself. And they walk into a room and that student has a knife. They might see a knife, they might see bullets. You know, they might see some poison or something on the counter that this person intend on using. Are they properly trained to deal with that? Do you actually train your first responders, your first line people? You gotta realize something. When your child steps on a college campus, here, now a lot of people think that the professors, no disrespect to professors, adjunct professors, or instructors, no disrespect to them. But you need to understand, there is a set of people or departments that interact with, you, with students consistently. They will see them more than just a class setting. They will see them when they're not in class and they haven't been listening to their professor. Your campus safety, your building services employees, your student life employees, these are people that when they are walking around when they're in the actual grounds, they're gonna see those students in a different light because they're gonna see them in their dorm rooms for those campuses that have residential dorms. They're gonna know the people that they're hanging around, the ones that are bad influences, the ones that are good influences. They're gonna notice the behavior difference because a student, I've seen students who will literally, in my experience, I have witnessed students when you see them in class, they are the model student. But when you take them out of that classroom and they are hanging around a certain group of people, they are a totally different person. Your public safety, your building, yes, building services, your cleaning people, 
need to be trained on how to observe and document the behavior that they see in these students. When to report it, who to report it to, what steps should be taken, who should be the person that intervenes. These are the things that need to be done. But I understand it has to be a very, very nice rope that you walk, a thin line to say, because you don't want to put them in a position to where students see them as you know the word snitches, tattletales. But if it saves a life, that's a different. But you want to train them to recognize these signs. You want to train them to have a rapport with the students. Like your 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 because uh, schools call them different things. To some schools, it's public safety. Some is campus police. So I'm just going to say to your campus security, public safety, whatever. Um, the thing about it is they need to be trained on how to have a rapport with the students without crossing any lines where students still respect them as an authority of the college, but yet recognize that they are someone that they can speak to and trust in having a conversation with and go to for information, for resources. Your public safety department should have this information available, not only for counseling on campus, but counseling within the community that they know that this student, if they come to me and say, I just feel like I need to talk, hey, here's some information, here's someone you could talk to. And that whoever is running that facility, it would be really great if they actually came and met with the public safety department. Just lay face to face, eyes to eyes, voice to voice. So there's a, a comfort level of actually engaging with each other and talking with each other. But many people, this training does not exist in many colleges. So when many you know, first responders or first line employees do come across a situation to where they're approaching someone who's thinking about committing suicide, it's, it's, it's not the best engagement it is the, the, the practices are not there and i understand there's a lot of mental health first aid training taking place right now which is good but i want to say this and i'm saying this with all due respect there's a big difference from watching videos and talking than actually responding and sitting there looking at someone and as they look you straight into your eyes, you can see that they are hurting and you're trying to break this wall of distrust and to let them know, yes, although I'm in a uniform and there's a badge on me, I am not here to judge you. I am not here to penalize you. I am here to help and get you the support that you need and you want. That is my job. I'm not here because I have to be. I'm here because I take pride in what I do and pride is, my pride is being able to help you get past this moment so you can achieve your goals. That's what a public safety officer mindset should be when they walk in the scene. Get their defenses down. Build a sincere trust conversation that you can engage with them to where they will share and talk with you. And hopefully they're willing to get real help, real ther uh, therapy assistance. But we have to figure out like in doing this, you know, like I said, I want to come at this from a college perspective. It's going to remain that colleges are really going to have to reassess how they are training everyone because this is not just a simple five day or you know one minute training there are different levels to this different levels of training that needs to be done but it needs to be campus wide you know campus wide these trainings need to take place but back to my original point how many counselors do you have on your staff to deal with these situations. Because the problem is some schools only have one counselor or two counselors, but they got thousands of students. 
so they can't possibly see all of them. So sometimes the students are sent to see someone who really is not qualified to assist them at the level they need to be assisted. Some schools are relying on what they call like peer-to-peer -peer programs where other students are talking to other students, but do students really feel comfortable disclosing all of the information, all of the information they have about themselves to other students? Because certain things, there's a trust level. Like, okay, I know you're friends with this person and this person tells everything. So it's just different things that need to be looked at. But when it comes to suicides, we have to get the students involved in being able to really support each other. That means educating the students on, you know, what are the resources available, how to be a friendly hand in assisting someone you know or possibly may be considering suicide, someone who is dealing with depression, to go and visit some of the counseling resources that are available, that are available. Because I'm telling you right now, a lot of college campuses and universities really do offer, you know, resources to help other students, to help students who are dealing with mental health issues. But the problem is, one, the student could feel embarrassed. They could feel like if somebody sees me walking into that office, they're going to think this. You know, my friends might talk about me, laugh about me. I'm not going to be taken serious. I might get kicked out of school. So all of these fears have to be dealt with so that the student feels comfortable in being able to engage with somebody to have these conversations. Now, me personally, I personally feel, because one of the things, just my perspective from my experience, is that students who are going for psychological therapy, mental health issues, they need a private way of engaging and actually being able to speak with these counselors. I think they will be more willing to do that if they have a more private means of engagement. A lot of these counseling places, students walk up to an open window where there's other people sitting around and they're being asked questions and they're kind of like uncomfortable because other people can possibly hear. And when students see them going in, oh, I saw you going into counseling. There needs to be a way to where colleges are actually giving them more privacy from the initial process and going through to where everything is not so public they're not so exposed you know they already don't want to expose what's going on inside of them now they're in the position to where they're being exposed about the fact that something is going on inside of them so these are the things that need to be addressed now like i was saying parents if you know your child is dealing with something you have to let the college know let them know i mean and you can even go so far as to say like listen okay she wants to enroll in the school but i would like to have a private meeting with your counselors and basically interview them ask them questions they do have a, pri a privacy pledge they, they can't disclose information so you know actually sit down with them and let them know like hey this is what i'm dealing with even if you, if you walk in with your child you have that meeting however that meeting takes place they need to know what's going on because that way throughout the school year they can do check-ins it could be a they can build a rapport with that student to where they feel comfortable and they can engage in conversations next is one of the other issues that I noticed that when we were dealing with people was, and I, I want you guys to know something, I had more students coming to me for advice and guidance than the counselor. And that's because they felt she was not approachable. They, they didn't feel a rapport with her. Um, and like I said, that's not to say she was a bad person, but as a counselor, you have to have, oh, and you, and you psychologists, you guys know this. There has to be a way of developing rapport with students. 
outside of them sitting in your office. You know, I think the problem for this particular counselor was she never actively engaged with the students. Never. Outside of them making an appointment, she wasn't really available. As the public safety director, I literally, when I, I would just walk around the campus, hey, how are you? I knew when students were taking tests. I knew students by name. They knew me by name. When we had Greek parties and, you know, one of the police officers said, you know what? You're like the mayor around here. But I understood the importance of having that rapport that the students knew. If you get in trouble, you're going to see me. But they understood more that I was there for their best interest. One of the, and, and I got every time we had new student orientation and we were all up on the stage, each department talking and parents asked why, I always get the same question. Why do you do what you do? Why are you here? The greatest feeling I got, and, I'm, and I say this with a full heart, was watching these young, uh, timid and afraid of the world freshmen come in and then four years later watch them walk across that stage with their head up high so proud it made me feel proud because I watched them transition into adults it was it was just such a proud moment because I feel like as a public safety director I had some influence and effect in that as everyone who works for that college or university does. You all play a part in that student getting to that walk, walking across that stage. So it's very important that we really understand that it's very key that parents and students who are going to a college really communicate what you are dealing with, what is going on. And like I said, make an appointment, not with the academic counselor, tell them you wanna talk to an actual therapist, a real psychologist, a licensed and certified psychologist who works on the campus who can assist you and help with that student. Another thing is, if that college campus doesn't have it, then if they get accepted into that school, find a therapist or counselor that is in close proximity to the campus that they can work with. Because not only does that give them that extra level of privacy, because they can say, hey, you know, on Tuesday, I don't have class, or I gotta go meet with my counselor. Oh, I gotta go do this. So now it takes away that whole thing of being ashamed, the embarrassment, people finding out you're in a more private secluded location. But also it gives you another resource. And most college campuses will have someone or hopefully multiple professional licensed uh, psychologists on campus if they don't they would definitely have they should have some resources within close proximity of the campus that they work with for their students but please share that because it makes a big difference when there are people reaching out and checking and the key thing is find someone that your student or even yourself if you need help this could apply to anybody that you feel like you can talk to, that you can build that rapport with because it makes a difference. Now, I think a lot of people have thought about suicide. I really do. I, I, I honestly believe that 98% of this world at some point in their life have thought about suicide. Another percentage has probably actually attempted suicide. You know, but it's something to where we need to really just educate ourselves on number one, what to do when we hear or suspect someone is attempting, is thinking about suicide. When we discover a friend is dealing with some form of depression, how do we, how do we intervene? How do we be supportive? How do we help that person and sort of lead them to the resources that can give them the proper care and help that they need. 
when we find someone who has committed suicide and they're now trying to get back to life, how do we re-engage them? Alleviating all judgmental, alleviating all, you know, deceptive thoughts and ideas and rhetoric and conversation to where they don't feel like they can trust you or they feel they're being judged. How do we get our colleges and universities the proper resources? And I think a lot of colleges and universities really want the proper resources, but it's costly. And also, I really would like to see more outside therapists, uh, and even government resources work with the colleges within their area. A lot of police officers have um, poli a local com police communities. Um, just for example, you know, the, the university I worked at was in DeKalb County. And DeKalb County had uh, someone who was a trained psychologist. When suicide cases came up, you know, that person would actually drive out to the scene. But the only problem is, sometimes there was only one. <laughs> but having that person who was a licensed police psychologist come in and speak to your public safety or your campus security department to really prep them, because I'm a big, I'm a big component and supporter of Every agency on a college, every police and security agency on a college needs to be trained and their protocols should lead all the way up to outside agencies coming on campus and taking over. It should. Most of us refer to it as the ICS, Incident Command System, but it should lead all the way up to that. When they come over, what do you do? Resident life, student life, you know, you get somebody that commits suicide or attempts suicide, express, or you know how it is on the campus, it spreads around campus, this person is depressed, this person is trying to deal with this. How do you deal with it in that college dorm so that person doesn't feel like they're now going to be isolated or they start putting themselves in self-exile? How do you deal with that? How do you communicate to the community to be more welcoming? and engaging without being dismissive or judgmental. You know, so that's why I say that this is a bigger plate than what a lot of people are actually dealing with. Because a lot of times when someone is dealing with depression, they hurt somebody has, you know, is, has thought about suicide or tried to commit suicide, they deal with the person. They may engage some of the roommates, but they don't engage the whole, the whole pie, because word spreads quick. So it shouldn't be when that happens that students are taught how to deal with some, another student that committed, that, that attempted suicide and now coming back to campus. That should be day one, how to deal with it. And it should be an ongoing thing. Every three months, you're having that lesson, that discussion, that training, working with people offering resources, letting them know. Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna be 100% that these things are done all of a sudden, it stops. There's always gonna be something that slips through, but a lot of it starts with training the students on how to be conscious and comfortable about their feelings and expressing their feelings, who to go to, having those resources available, them being support factors with each other, having the proper staffing of licensed, certified psychologists and therapists on the campus. I'm not talking about academic counselors, I'm talking about licensed, certified therapists and psychologists. That's what I'm talking about. As a uh, accessible resource for those students for an ongoing basis. Also, those counselors, those therapists, having that rapport with the students that they don't feel like they're being put on the couch and examined, but those people being put on, you know, like I said, some just distracted me, <laughs> but having students feel like when they sit down to talk to that person that they're able to have a real open and honest conversation and they're just not there for data like you're just talking to me because you need clinical data no 
I'm talking to you because I want you to live. I want you to survive. I want to honestly help. That is what they need to get from meeting with that licensed certified psychology and therapist. You know, I'm gonna keep saying that, right? Licensed and certified psychologists and therapists, not counselor, academic counselor, two totally different things. But I think it's very important that we start from there. That's a good starting point that we have these conversations, that we have conversations that open the door to make students feel welcome to discuss what they're going through, what they're feeling. Also to have their friends or family pick up the phone and say, hey, I just want you to know, I think my daughter's thinking about this. You know, even if you wanna keep it anonymous, I don't want her to know that I called or him that I called, especially for men, because for men, there's absolutely nothing out there. Like men don't get the emotional mental health support that women do. It's facts, but we have to put it out there that help is available. Build that rapport with the students on all levels. And even with social media, teach, 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 teach people that when they see certain posts on social media who to send it to like i would love just to see one school come up with something to where if they see somebody post something on social media about i'm thinking suicide like okay send that here reach out to this person you know it's like there, there has to be something that we can do to just because social media alone is a whole nother monster um, because it can be fun it can, social media can make young people feel alive it can make them feel supported but it can also make them feel inadequate it can make them feel like it, it can tear down their confidence you know so it's things like this that definitely have to be addressed and it's tough it's tough but I think most of it's gonna start with training. It's gonna start by educating the students, educating the staff, and it's gotta be an ongoing thing. An ongoing thing. And I think you gotta have different trainings for different departments. How you train your campus safety or campus police department has to be totally different than how you train your student life. Because when people see that campus security or that campus uh, police, automatically the uniform is gonna give them a different take of why that person is there. So that's why I think they need that counseling, that understanding. I will also go so far as to recommend that one person from each shift of a campus safety, campus security department takes a specialized class in that. They take a specialized class in dealing with that type of situation. That's me. I'm a big training guy. So, but anyway, guys, this has been long enough. It's probably almost an hour, but I just wanted to share that with you because we have a lot of suicides taking place. A lot of the suicides are with college athletes. We all know the stress of college, you know, First of all, trying to pay for college. You know, then you got the fact that your parents may be not aware, but sometimes parents can be hard. Like you're failing out of college, I spent a lot of money. Then they're trying to play sports. They want to make the team, you know, and the pressure of not winning versus winning, winning, and then all of a sudden you're at this star status, this expectation. You have to score so many points or do so many things. You know, so it's just a lot. It's a lot. Even just the health component of being a college athlete and trying to stay healthy and a person may be struggling to maintain that weight, maintain that body image, you know, of being able to lift so many weights or do so much things on the football field or baseball field or a cheerleader or a dancer, even band members, you know, especially with HBCU bands, do they're pretty much athletes in themselves. So it's just so much that has to be considered. And that's why I'm a big component. And one thing I've been uh, sort of stressing at the current uh, place I'm at right now with my team is we're basically, I'm training them on victim response, on like how to properly respond. 
how to respond without being judgmental and accusal. So we're going through that training right now because they haven't had it before. So I'm, I wanna bring this training into them. So, but yeah, but that's another story. But anyway, that's what I wanna talk about guys. I know I said a lot, I went on a lot. I'm just very passionate about this stuff. I kinda jumped all over the place. But the one thing I wanna stay focused on is, if you are having thoughts of suicide, if you are dealing with depression, please do not be ashamed, do not be embarrassed to reach out for help. Um, in the notes below on this, I'm gonna put down the link to some places you can call for assistance. For those of you who have health insurance, please check your health insurance. A lot of health insurances do cover uh, various forms of behavior, behavior and mental health. So please check in that and use that resource if you can. I don't think we should be losing people so young in life. And even some of our older people who are so wise, we are lo we've lost so many people. And I just feel like there's so much you have to offer. And I would just love to see you live your best life. And if you are dealing with depression and you need, I don't know, someone to talk to, you need some information on who to reach, please reach out to me. I will do the research. I will connect you with people. I'm not a counselor. By no means, I'm not a licensed, like ther licensed therapist or psychologist, but if you need me to provide you with some information on who to contact, some resources in your area, just, you can send me an email. I'll put my email right here. Send me an email. I will send you information. Just tell me your zip code or your area, the closest city. I will find places for you to go and people for you to speak to because I think it's so important. I think a lot of us are hurting and a lot of us deal with our hurt and pain internally and we struggle with it. And when you don't have an outlet, you don't have another ear to help you sort of balance things out, it can become overwhelming. I've seen people who will really start to watch YouTube videos and listen. They'll, they're like, they'll go to supernatural characters like Dean Winchester, who talk about wanting to die. You know, they'll watch characters like that, videos over and over and over. They'll watch videos or music or songs or movies where the hero dies or a person dies. They become sort of, I wanna say, um, fascinated is not the word I want to use, but it, it sort of gets my point across. They just become stuck on things or movies or entertainment to where it represents the end of life. And it doesn't have to be the end, for, end of life for you at all. I, I really believe you can work through it. I really believe there are options out there. So like I said, I don't care where you are in this world, send me the information and I will do my best and I promise you I will respond with information of how you can get help, things you can do, people you can talk to. And like I said, I'm gonna put a bunch of links down below for anybody who's needing help with dealing with suicide. Hey guys, thank you for watching, I appreciate you. Like I said, none of my stuff is monetized. I don't do, my stuff is not monetized. This is all because I believe in helping people. I believe in self-love, self-respect, self-care. So I'm not making no money off this. The fact that you are watching this, the fact that this could help one person say, I wanna live, that's enough for me. If it helps a hundred, that's even better. All right, hey, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Simply stretch, simply stretch on.